Um, as you can see from Abram's message, we're going to be uh, te- um, preaching over unity tonight. And I'm going to be in Ephes- Ephesians uh, chapter 4, verse 1 through 5. If you guys want to turn there. And it says, Therefore, I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. Always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other, making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. For there is one body and one spirit, just as you have been called to one glorious hope for the future. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father who is over all and in all and living through all. Uh, The first thing I want to look at is being humble and gentle with each other. Uh, We're called to love each other no matter what happens, you know, no matter our faults, no matter um, anything that we do. Uh, We're all human. We're all going to make mistakes. And as a body of Christ, we're supposed to be unified and we're supposed to forgive each other. We're supposed to love each other, you know, show each other, um, grace and mercy even when we don't deserve it that's how we have a true unity is whenever I mean you know we might um, you know we might offend somebody or um, you know that happens as people you know we offend somebody and they get mad and they you know hold bitterness but we're called to love each other and we're called to forgive each other Um, you know we're supposed to be one body and in one body you can't have it really does make a big difference whenever you have one person that's mad at everybody else because something's not going their way or they don't like how something's being handled. It causes a division. And in unity, whenever you have a division, things can't flow fluently. They can't, you know, flow in the way that God wants, and it hinders God's work. And we're, uh, we're called to forgive each other, even when we don't want to, or even when it's hard. You know, it's if God can come down and die for us and forgive us for the things that we've done, why can't we forgive somebody, you know, for something small? Or even if it is something major, you don't deserve forgiveness. But, you know, even if they don't, if God forgave you, why can't you forgive them? And that's a big part of unity. Um, like I said, we all have faults and stuff, and that comes in two ways. Um, you know, obviously, if you know something is going to offend somebody, then don't do it. You know, especially in front of them or to them, or if you know it's going to offend them, if you know they don't agree with it, because we don't all agree on the same thing, then don't do it. But on the flip side of that, if somebody does offend you, you know, don't take it to heart. Don't take it and, you know, let it build up inside of you, you know, and uh, store up anger. You know, go to the God, and if you have a true relationship with God, he's going to give you the power to forgive them. I mean, you might not have the same relationship with them as you did, but you're still going to have that unity in God because through God, we're one body. Um, And as it says um, in verse 5, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, and one God and Father who is over all and in all and living through all. We're one body, and there is only one God. To um, To keep peace and unity is our main focus and should be on, and our main focus should be on God. When that happens, we are more able to forgive and work past our problems. Though it may take time with our focus on God, that unity will be kept and made stronger, and the work of the Lord won't be hindered because our focus, you know, our focus won't be off course. Um, As I was studying this, I was looking uh, at the bottom um, at my study Bible, and uh, it says, Often differences among people can lead to division, but this should not be true in the church. Instead of, instead of concentrating on what divides us, we should remember what unites us. One body, one spirit, one future, one Lord, and one faith, one baptism, and one God. Have you learned to appreciate people who are different from you, and can you see their different gifts and viewpoints can keep uh, can keep the church as it does God's work. Learn to enjoy the way we the way we members of Christ's body complement one another. You know we don't need to focus on how 
we're different. We need to focus on how we're the same and how we can go out and we can share God's word and how we can have that unity in God and, um, you know, how we're the same and how we can go out and focus on what's really important. That's bringing uh, loss to Christ. That's saving souls. And we need to be in unity to do that. Whenever you're a body and you have an arm that's not working, things aren't, you know, it doesn't help at all. Like, things aren't easy whenever that happens. And we're supposed to be in full unity. And wait, I mean, go get involved in your churches uh, or in your church. Um, you know, pray, as Abram was saying, we need to pray for each other, pray for each other's families. You know, go get involved. Ask the pastor how you can get involved. I'm sure he's more than happy to tell you different ways that you can get involved. Um, I know that because he's helped our family with that. Um, he's helped me with that through the youth group. Jared's helped me with that through the youth group. Um, they'll give you ways to get involved. And as a church, that's something that we need to do. Is we need to be involved and um, we need to try and stay out of cliques. That's one thing that's um, that's really bad these days is that some churches get really cliquish, and we need to stay away from that. We need to have our arms open and accept people as uh, as who they are, like God does. Um, so, you know, we just need to we need to focus on God and we need to focus on our unity and um, you know focus on what God really has called us to do.